Hello everybody, this is Chris Mackey and this is your 23rd tutorial on Honeybee Energy Modeling. And uh, and this is this is well it's okay it's going to be I think one of the one of the last ones because I know we've been running all the way through 23 videos here straight uh, looking at just my parents' house so I think this is going to we're going to take a bit of a break after this but uh, but this is this is going to be a, uh, one where I show you essentially how to account for contact shading in your simulations. Uh, and because we've been running this, you know, this energy model, building out this energy model of my parents' house over the last few, uh, you know, last 22 videos. Um, but there hasn't been any sort of context shading that, you know, that's going to block the sunlight to these windows. And we really need to take care of this if it's going to be, you know, a decent model. Uh, but that's, you know, hopefully I think that's one of the last things that I would really need to show you guys so that you can customize your models all the way to the level that you need it to. So, all right. So first I'll start off by showing you guys that I've had actually context in this rhino scene the whole time. I have, I have the, you know, sort of my neighbors, my parents' neighbors and, um, you know, in their houses, uh, and you know, my family garage, and and what else? We got some trees in the backyard, the the fence sort of around the property. So all right, so all this stuff is now going to get. We're going to factor this into uh, into the the uh, the the energy model now. And so all right, so to give this a you know uh, to start this off, I mean, well, the thing is, all right, I have the ground here actually, but you know, we don't. I, I should say off the off the bat, Energy Plus has ways for already accounting for where the ground plane is. Because I had sort of, as I had kind of mentioned earlier, that you know that you can set the you know knows that the ground plane is roughly at at where the, the you know the origin is equal to zero. So you don't necessarily you know our energy simulations will actually have you know the reflectance of the sun off the ground taken into account for it. But what it doesn't have is are these geometries that are essentially going to block the sun to it at specific hours, um, and that's what we're going to account for in this one. And then actually we're going to do something special also because well this this tree actually isn't currently in my my parents' place right now. Uh, in their backyard, but I'm strongly advocating for it because I'm, you know, we're going to actually do something cool with this uh, because we're going to uh, pretend that this is a deciduous tree and that there's a schedule that we set to it. Um, you know, and, you know, when the deciduous tree loses its leaves in winter, it lets in this nice sun onto the south facade of the house. Um, through these through these windows and you know and so you get a kind of sort of passive solar heat effect uh, but in summer you get the, the dense leaves and then you know and then it blocks out the sun so I think I think this would help save the house a bit of energy uh, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna model it so that I can show my parents actually how much energy they would save by planting that tree so all right so let's get down to business all right let's let's uh, let's first bring in in these these uh, these context geometries um, and I'm just, you know, I'll do that. I mean, I, they're all in the same layer, but I'm going to just, you know, select them all together um, one by one here. And I'm going to select everything except for that, that tree, that special tree that we'll, we'll treat. We'll put a schedule on that, uh, as you guys already are familiar with from the past few videos. So, all right. So the first thing I need to do is I need to bring these geometries into Grasshopper as B-Reps. Um, just like just like our zones, I mean. So I'm gonna, you know, I double click, type B rep, and then I'll right click on it and go set multiple B reps while I have all of these selected. And okay, and that brings our our geometry into into Grasshopper as you see when I click on it or not. That you know that turns red or green. Uh, and you know, and you guys know I like to kind of right click and do this internalized data, which makes sure that you know when I give you guys this Grasshopper file in the in the you know, in the description of the video below, uh, that you know you guys get the geometry in the Grasshopper file, not the Rhino file. Um, all right, and we can. I'm just going to go to go ahead and turn the preview off on that. We know that it's in Grasshopper. Uh, all right, and so the way that we turn this into the way that we assign, we change this from simple geometries, these simple B reps and untrimmed surfaces. The way we change those into actual inputs for the for the the Energy Plus model is with this component that is right under. It's under the nine uh, uh, Honeybee Energy tab, and it says Honeybee EP Context Surfaces. Uh, and so yeah, so if you guys can you know find this component under the nine tab and drag and drop the Honeybee EP contact surfaces onto the canvas, you'll see that it takes as an input at at the top it takes the the shade surfaces which are essentially you know essentially what we've got here in our B rep that we brought in from the from the the Rhino scene. Um, and so, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna connect that the, those up to the shade surfaces there, and you'll see that instantly it turns it into from the shade surface, and you know, just that in the same workflow that you guys are probably really familiar with by now, you know, it pops out as a set of untrimmed surfaces. But now, now these surfaces are basically are ready to be run through the energy model. 
Um, and you know, and maybe actually, maybe we'll do a kind of preview of these just so that we have a you know we account for them in our model. I'm gonna do a Control C and Control V on the this this custom preview. I mean, you guys know you can search for it um, in any case. Um, but yeah, but let's see if I hook up the geometry there, and then I'll I'll hide everything in the Rhino scene. But just so you guys can see what exactly is going on. All right. So so when it was turned into context surfaces, uh, you see actually that you know that it's not like this, this the, the curvy, you know, spherical tree that was over here got planarized, uh, as did everything in, in, you know, in this model, as did the cone and everything else. Uh, and that's, you know, that's because if you guys remember, I said a few videos back, Energy Plus only understands planar surfaces. Um, so yeah, so we kind of have to mesh everything and, you know, and, and turn it into these things in order for Energy Plus to be able to account for it correctly. But effectively, all right, and yeah, and, you know, I'll move this off to the side, but, but these, these the, this, these untrimmed surfaces that we get out of this this component are effectively something now that we can go then and take maybe I'll move this closer to the run energy simulation point so you guys can see we can take this honeybee context and plug it into the honeybee context input of the run simulation component and now the next time that we run a honeybee energy simulation it will take into account all of these geometries all of these context geometries and it will um, and it will block the sun at those key hours where you know where the the, the position in the sun would be blocked uh, to a certain window and so on and so forth. Um, so all right, so so you guys get the sense that's roughly that's generally how you bring in context um, into into your your uh, simulations. But you'll notice that there's also there's a few different things that you can set here. So there's there's an EP trans schedule, and that's that's the key thing. That schedule, that tran transparency schedule is what we're going to use to take that tree that, you know, and the properties of it where it loses its leaves. Uh, and we're going to use that to, to you know, create a, 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 you know, a custom schedule for that uh, throughout the year in, in, in a second. But I'll just, I just want to walk you guys to the rest of these. There's also, you can assign a radiance material here. I mean, we're not concerned about that right now because we're just, we're just running everything through Energy Plus. But if you want to use the same geometry in a radiance simulation and a daylight simulation, you know, basically this context is good to go to plug into, into, into that component. Um, and, uh, and now you also get mesh settings if you want to change stuff around. I mean, I don't know. I kind of like, I mean, like, so that's effectively going to control how it breaks up curved geometries like this tree. Um, but, you know, but I think those are perfectly fine the way that they are now. I would usually just accept the defaults. Uh, and then there's also the option, well, Actually, maybe it's useful for you guys to see this. If we set this to true, I mean, because sometimes, you know, if you get very detailed context like this, it could really make the energy simulation run long. So if you set up a Boolean toggle to this and set it to true, it'll run just a bounding box around everything. And uh, I mean, actually, yeah, this is, this is really not so good in our case because, uh, yeah, with the fence, okay, yeah, with the fence, it's, you know, it's intersecting our zones. So that would probably cause Energy Plus to crash. Um, so, all right, so we really don't want to do that, but just so you know, you guys know, sometimes if you have, like, if your context is just a bunch of skyscrapers, um, then, you know, then you, you probably, you want to, uh, you want to, you want to maybe just take a bounding box and that'll make your energy simulation run a lot faster. Um, okay. Well, actually, no, I'm going to get rid of this all together, uh, right now and just give me a second. Okay. All right. Now, now let's take care of that other, uh, this other tree in the backyard that we have here. If I turn the rhino geometry back on. Uh, and we'll we'll do you know we'll do a separate sort of honeybee context for this one because we're going to apply a schedule to it. So just like the other stuff, we're going to make a B rep, B rep, and you know we'll have it selected in the Rhino scene. And I can just do set one B rep this time uh, because you know it's just it's just one uh, one surface. And then if I hide it, you know hide. Uh, come on, not hide hide. You'll see that, yeah, it's a B rep now in, in, uh, in Grasshopper. Uh, and I'll just turn the preview off on it like we did the other stuff. And, you know, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide everything here. Okay. All right. And so, and now we'll just take another one of these context components. I'm just going to do a, well, maybe Control C, Control V would take a while because that component runs each time you copy it. So I'm just going to drag and drop another Honeybee EP context surfaces component onto the canvas. Hook up the B rep there. Uh, and now, and now it's you know it's going to mesh it just like like it did the other stuff. And I'm going to hook this up to the the preview actually, so we can see that that one also in there as well. That there's our nice little uh, deciduous tree that I'm hoping my parents will plant. Uh, but all right, now we need to make a schedule for this. Um, 
And I want to walk you guys through this. I mean, I imagine probably through the last few videos, you guys already have a sense of how to do this. But I want to walk you through it because, I mean, because, yeah, because it's, you know, maybe it's, a, well, it is a different schedule type. So I, I, I could see, I uh, could see value in it than, than an occupancy schedule or a, uh, whoops, or, or, uh, or a different type. Um, so, and, and I mean, and also this will be applicable. The type of schedule we make here will be applicable because maybe you have like, I don't know, my parents used to put up awnings on the windows, I think I mentioned. Um, and you know, and you can, you know, sim you can put a transient, ske a transparency schedule uh, on those to essentially say, you know, that uh, my parents put the awnings up on this date and then they took them down on that date and, you know, and then feed those into the simulation and say that it helped this much and it saved this much energy and kept the house that much cooler. But anyway, all right, so let's, let's make a schedule for this tree. So, all right, let's see what, the, what is the best way to do this. I guess we can do it on like a month by month basis, even though the months have different sort of values. Uh, yeah, I think, I think that's fine. And we'll kind of, it'll be a little rough around the edges, but we'll, you know, we'll find a way to make it work. So, I mean, at the heart of this, I mean, well, you know, we've used the math and the set components to make a lot of the stuff already, but I'm going to grab a duplicate data component, which is your big, uh, you know, one of your number one helping components when you're making custom schedules. Uh, and let's see, and I'm just going to take a value, I'm going to, you know, say simply, maybe we'll say that the tree has a transparency of, uh, of 0.5, maybe we'll say, um, during, during most of the winter. Because, of course, there's still branches there, things are going to block light. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, draw up a panel here by hitting quotation marks and do 0 0.5. Um, and I'm going to duplicate that, that value for, uh, for the, you know, the number of months that we have. So we need a number here. Um, and let's see, so let's, how many times, uh, maybe, maybe we'll say that, you know, for the tree has this type of transparency all the way up, uh, you know, I guess, I guess through May. Yeah, May, May, it's, it's probably really not until June a lot of times and the leaves really come out on the trees. Um, so, all right, so I'm actually going to enlist the help of some of the math components here to help me figure this out. Uh, so we have roughly uh, 24 hours in a day. And, uh, and then we have uh, 31 days, well, 30 maybe we'll do like a kind of average, 30 days in a month. And so that would involve duplicating it 720 times. But then we want to take that, I'm going to do a control C. I, I'm just using Grasshopper as a calculator here. You can use any sort of calculator for this. But maybe we say, all right, what do we have? Like uh, we said six months until we get to June. So this should be values all the way for the first part of the year, all the way up till to June. When we'll say that, you know, maybe, yeah, that the transparency changes all the way, or, yeah, the transparency will change to zero, actually, I guess is what we should say. Um, because, yeah, because it's, it's perfectly opaque maybe in the summer. All right, so we'll hook that number up there, that 4,000, uh, you know, 320. And we'll hook it up here, and we'll pull up the panel, and we'll see that we get out of here a list of values, you know, 4,000 however many values for all the way up to the month of June of 0.5. All right, so that's our schedule. Uh, you know, actually, we're kind of running out of room here. Let me see. I'm going to move all this stuff around a little bit. Move the energy simulation over. Um, okay, and now let's. Uh, so let's make also now a schedule for the time when the leaves are on the tree. So again, that'll be a duplicate data component. And I'll do a Control C and a Control V. Uh, and this time we said we want a transparency of zero. Uh, but let's see the number of times that we want to duplicate this. Uh, all right, actually, you know, I'm going to just copy this straight from here. Or, you know, actually, I can co just only copy this one. There we go. And then maybe we'll say, let's see, from June all the way to, you know, July, August, September. It's probably not until, I mean, we're in October now, and we still have leaves on the trees. So maybe, maybe we'll say it's not until October, but, you know, it's starting to fall off. All right, so maybe we'll say, like, um, or, yeah, maybe we can do it halfway, actually. So how many months is that? That is three, four, that's 5.5 that's months of the year, I think. Uh, yes, that should be right. And then so, then so we duplicate it this many times. Am I doing this right? Let me see. Is it six, six months until we get all the way to June that we've run through January, February, March? No, I guess actually we only run through five. I'm sorry. All right, I was, I was saying that the leaves don't come out until July, and that's not true at all. All right, so we've, we go and run through five months, and then we've got 5.5 .5 months with leaves, and then we've got the remainder. And so, so all right, so we've got this list of zero values for that, that time, and, um, and let's see. And finally, we will duplicate the, the number of values uh, for, for the, the rest of the list. So really what, really what we want is these, you know, the sum of these minus 8,760, which is the number of hours of the year. So, all right, let's see. I'm going to add these two numbers together. 
I don't know. I'm really, yeah, I'm just really kind of making use of the math components here. And so it's basically just, and now we'll just use a subtraction component. So now, really, the rest of the, the duplication is just 8,760 minus this number. And so uh, 1,200 times we're going to duplicate it. Yeah, and I guess that, that makes roughly good sense. And then so, so, all right, so now we've got, you know, leaves are off the trees for, for most of winter and first part of spring. Leaves are on the trees for summer, and then leaves fall off the trees. And so let's compile these all into one list. You know, I'm just going to bring up a data uh, component in native grasshopper data and connect that the first part of the year, the middle of the year, and the last part of the year. And together we should get, a, uh, you know, a list that has 8,760 values. Awesome, that's exactly what we want. And now this is, I mean, as you guys already know from, from the, the, the previous videos, we can now use this and, and if we go into Honeybee and Schedules and CSV Schedule, um, that, you know, that we can plug the values in here uh, for, for that. And then we're just, you know, and, and it's checking it at first uh, just to be sure, so it takes a few seconds. And then we're just going to uh, take a Boolean toggle, set it to true. Oh, oh, and also, well, we have a bunch of schedules in this file. So I'm actually going to name this schedule uh, Leaves on Trees. Okay. And, uh, and so, and we'll take that, we'll make that our schedule name, and then we'll write out this CSV schedule by connecting that, that Boolean toggle value to there. And then finally, so now you see that we get out of that, that CSV file path that was written to our, you know, onto our system, onto your computer, and we'll plug in the CSV schedule for our EP trans schedule. And now, now we've effectively taken that tree in the backyard and, and put a transparency schedule on it for, for, you know, for the different times of year when the leaves are going to fall on and off of it. All right, and now this bullet, you know, and we got to hold down shift also and connect this. I almost forgot that. Connect that to our, our context there. And so now, now we've taken into account our, 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 our context. We've made a schedule for the tree. We've taken into account all the other trees. And I mean, these are conifers anyway, so we don't need to make a schedule for them. Uh, but, you know, maybe if you really want to, you can get down deeper into that. And, you know, and you could use the same thing for any other type of context shading, for awnings, like I had said, uh, for outdoor louvers, maybe then you'll put up and take down at some times of the year. Or, you know, you can really get creative. That's the that's kind of point with the, with the EP trans schedule here. But, um, but anyway, guys, all right. So that's... That's, uh, that's, I know, yeah, we've run all the way through 23 videos, and I'm going to take the opportunity here because I think we'll, uh, I don't know, I might draw the line here on this series for at least for a little while. I mean, we'll keep adding to it. Um, and I think, I, yeah, I think actually I probably want to come back at some point and show you guys. So you know that DaySim actually outputs a CSV schedule that's just like this that you can use for the lighting inside your building. Um, so yeah, and then, so maybe I'll show you guys that at some point uh, soon. But for the time being, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bit of a break. It's been a so I mean, well, I don't know if you guys have gone all the way through these 23 videos. I, I mean, you certainly have a lot of the uh, the tools that you need to really customize your energy simulations and make something meaningful to your design practice. Um, and uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. You know, you should also know that there are a bunch of uh, tangential uh, uh, series that are that are uh, you know similar to this one. Uh, there's one on uh, on Honeybee, or sorry, on Ladybug Comfort Tools, um, which also builds off of you know it shows you some ways of visualizing the results of of, uh, of of Honeybee Energy Simulations. So I can recommend that if you finish this series now. Um, and let's see, I can recommend, well, we're, we're going to do a few more. I mean, I'm going to make another series on uh, shading, and we'll cover some types of dynamic shading in that and, you know, different types of things for that. So if you guys, you know, look forward to that. And, uh, and yeah, and I know Mustafa has put up a big series on, on daylight. So, uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of other resources out there, uh, you know, if, if you've made it through this one. But if you guys have made it through this, thank you so much for, for sitting through this. You guys are troopers. And you're like armed now with the knowledge to go out and make awesome energy models. And uh, and thank you guys for watching. You guys are your wonderful people. And and always, I've always loved to hear from you guys, both Mustafa and I. I and feel free to send us emails or you know post on the Grasshopper group at any time. Uh, stay awesome, guys. You are you are you're the thing that keeps this movement alive.